another in HEL, and especially is characterization in operating systems on the active material that you have inside with the using of uh, X rays. So a battery is an energy storage device that allows portability. And uh, this energy storage uh, everyone uses, for instance, is laptop computers, portable electronics, and also cars nowadays. In other words, it's enabled the portability. So, the so one of the fundamental aspects, I think, is the geometric and the volumetric energy density of the cell. I mean, the energy that the cell delivered in a given mass of, or volume. The aspect is uh, shown here in this graph and also tells why the lithium ion technology, because it's uh, in the upper right corner of this graph, has been the main actor in electrochemical power sources. So we have the lead acid batteries, nickel, cadmium, and also lead ions occupies this place. But now it's kind of replaced also by some other ion technologies such as sodium, also potassium ions. They are very, very relevant. And uh, okay, as an example, battery is also a strong market in the electromotility sector, as demonstrated by the exponential increasing using electric vehicles in the last year. Also, it might be considered that this is just one side of the market. As the other side, there is batteries for stationary applications. So, the fundamental players in the batteries, also considered in material science aspect, is here indicated. So here, basically, we have the material that we have inside the battery. So batteries have a positive electrode, a negative electrode here, we have uh, electrolytes, we have a separator, and especially we have ions that shuffling from one side to the other side. So this is a shuffling from the positive electron, negative electrodes, and we have uh, multiple cycles. Basically, we do and perform some electrochemical reactions in, really in, a, in a loop. But of course, um, what we may say is that um, a lot of uh, material scientists now are more likely interested in the positive electrode than rather negative electrodes. There are several options as a negative electrode, so that's why they're all the one they want to use, and then maybe to show up the the, 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 the the performance of the new positive electrode material. Anyway, both electrodes normally formed by um, some layer of samples, as indicated in here, so uh, where some ions or some other ions can really accommodate in, in the planar structure of those layer electrodes. But overall, we have to write down an electrochemical equation. The electrochemical equation is the one that here indicated, for instance, for the positive electrode. So normally this material, let's say, is a metal oxides, for instance, in this case, is vanadium B205, where the B205 takes one lithium, then takes an electron, to form a charged species, a discharged species. And then the opposite holds true during discharge. So the loop is this one. But there are some fundamental questions that, of course, the material scientists are interested in. First of all, different ions. Which is the electroactivity? Which metal has the electroactivity? Here, just indicate the one. But one of the most performing material now is, let's say, the NMC. This is a combination between oxides of the nickel, manganese, cobalt. So, which is the has the electrode activity? And uh, another aspect that we have to uh, say is where does this charge go? So, of course, we are interested in the detailing some uh, structural and also electronic modification that we have upon this electrochemical reaction. Um, on the other aspect, also, we have to say that the bulk of the material is concerned. So batteries, not only happens, the, 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 the electroactivity not only concerns the surface, but also the bulk of the material. So we have uh, just seeking some bulk um, advanced techniques in order to detail um, and to disclose the structure proper relationship that we have. So this can be done by using X-rays. And by bombarding X-rays within a material, um, a, several, a series of phenomena appears. And uh, so we have the production of heat. We have electrons, primary electrons, secondary electrons, compound electrons. We have, of course, the beam transmitted. So the material absorbs some of the X-ray beam. Then it releases some X-ray fluorescence. 
this is also very important analytical techniques. But today I want to focus more on those two. The one is the beam transmitted. So we are interested in X-ray absorption spectroscopy. The other one, we are interested in uh, the scattered X-rays, actually just the coherent scattering of X-ray, that is the diffraction techniques. So let's have just a brief look at those two techniques and their applications in the battery fields. So, and why we use XRD on the battery materials? Because we probe the long range order. So we're interested in the long range order. Of course, the material has to be crystalline. And then we have the phase identification. We want to see some and disclose some lattice defects and also strain. And uh, this is kind of a dream that also may see the intercalation sites. XRD also enabled to have an uh, in situ and operando experiment. What does it mean? That uh, this is, uh, we have a true electrochemical cell, a battery, that we run at the synchrotron at the X ray equipment in the lab, and then we collect simultaneously some X ray diffraction patterns. So, in that case, it would be possible to have to check in the phase modification and the lattice contraction and expansion. Of course, um, you can do this powder diffraction on the pristine material and uh, the quality of the spectra that you attend your apparent experiment is slightly lower than just uh, considering the, 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 the powder diffraction of the pristine material. On the other hand, a very complementary techniques also using X-rays is the XARS. So X-ray absorption spectroscopy. Here F also indicates fine structure because we see an example that we also have a fine structure and the, the analysis which produces very interesting results, especially in the battery fields. In that case, we can just probe the short range order of what of some metallic sites, the short range order of some metal sites. So only short range order, extra the long range order, but a good thing is the crystalline is not required. So any material can be studied also, I mean, gases can be studied also with these techniques. That is not, uh, I mean, affect the, the battery, of course. But important is the element selective techniques. So we can probe just uh, one selected element, only the element and the interested. If the, in a battery you have the two metals, and we've shown an example where we have iron and also manganese, we can just tune the focus the beam on the manganese, tune on the iron, and to see what's up in the around. And we also, in information provided our chemical and structural information, so we can disclose the electrochemical reaction mechanism. And of course, we can do as well in situ on the perhaps experiment. In that case, we can uh, check the electronic and the structure reversibility of the system. So, and um, testing with the electrochemical test, of course, we, we probe the electrochemical reversibility, but we want to um, infer about the structural electronic, we can use those in situ and operand experiment. Then we will show an application where um, data analyzing extent, advanced data analysis can be done by using this uh, algorithm that is a kinematic approach. But anyway, I want to just um, disclose one important aspect that is the by using X-rays, guarantees a fantastic selectivity for the atomic species. <clears throat> so any metal size of a given material can be selected. And uh, it's just possible to focus exclusively on that size. Here is indicated, for instance, the k edge absorption threshold for given metals. And uh, this is from uh, titanium to zinc, which is the first transition role, where you may see that the difference in the energy are so large that, of course, the selectivity is just natural. So we have manganese, for instance, is a 65, 39. Z plus one with respect to manganese, iron, 7112 electron volt. And there's just a lot of room inside. And for instance, if we were to compare in terms of electron volt, the red light is one electron volt. And the UV visible spectroscope and the blue light is a three electron volt. Okay, so one of the issues to be solved is the fact that to obtain a good signals to Royce ratio in their experiment, the synchrotron radiation required for excess absorption spectroscopy. And the source is not uh, really widely available. So that's why it can be just a, a limitation. And uh, in uh, now, I want to focus on the 
operando experiment. And especially to, to give a few words on the difference between operando and ex situ measurement. So in operando experiment, we have a battery. This is a true battery. That is a bag cell battery that is connected by cables with an external device that, of course, produces the charge and discharge in the battery. And then this is, for instance, a transmission mode XIS, so X resorption spectroscopy. And we, we record a bunch of spectra, a bunch of spectra, while modifying the potential of the battery. So we can a lot of spectra. And X, this is the operando modality. What about the ex situ modality? Ex situ means that you have just one step, for instance, from this point to this point. Then you have to open up the battery, to dismount the battery, to, to collect the cathode of the material, and then bring the scatter to the synchrotron and have the measurement done. So the two modalities are very different, one respect to the, to the other. You can do both with the XRD and also with the XS option spectroscopy. So now let's see two examples of the parent experiment on battery materials. This is uh, uh, the bunch of specs that you obtain during, uh, for instance, the, the charging of this material. So you have a lot of spectra. It's very interesting. You have uh, all the modifications, really follow all the modifications. And uh, this is, uh, on the other side, the XRT, on the two different cells. Okay, the cells can be also the same, but this is just an example where the two cells are different, two electrochemical cells. One, a transmission for XR studies. The other is a real coin cell, as you can see, it's kind of visible here, real coin cell with an image plate detector just on behind the cell in order to collect the diffraction pattern collection. So um, the main advantage is that this figure provides more realistic representation of the reaction behavior found under normal operating condition, normal operating condition. But also but there are other slides where apart the first motivation to the design of random experiment, what are the other characteristics, advantages, and disadvantages of this approach? The first is referring to both SARS and XRD. And the typical drawbacks of exit or experimental avoidance, such as alteration of sensitive species because of error moisture. When you open up the cell, you might have this problem. And the relaxation reaction that may occur while dismantling the cell, of course, are avoided. I think there's also a third one that is, uh, can be also mentioned here, that is because the cells are continuously connected with the potential start with the cable, we may see that any surface electron that might be created by the X-ray beam is suddenly removed from the electron. And this is good because electrons very, you know, reducing agent. <coughs> then again, a couple of uh, indications, one referring to the operand XRD at the synchrotron. We have a tunable photon energy up to higher energy. It permits to the extension of this space that can be probed because normally in uh, Laboratory mode, this lambda is a constant. Here we have a, we can tune really up to which energy we want. So we have a, no limitation about the 2D and the, and the theta. Then we can also make collect fluorescence free power XRD data and also having a depth analysis of RD energy. Uh, I want to mention that uh, on uh, SAFs, the application of uh, uh, chemometrics also permits, I just have an example, the final, just the final, a number of chemical species according to the reaction can be probed. So now let's see some examples. So basically, I um, want to pull, bring the attention to some example of the blush blue analogous batteries. So what is blush and blue? Okay, blush and blue is, uh, of course, is, is a color. Is this deep blue color? that also Van Gogh used in his famous masterpiece, Starry Night. But from the um, chemistry viewpoint, the pressure blue is iron as a sign of the rate. Uh, where the two iron center occupies the vertex position, the vertex position of a cube, and the both are linked to the sunide link. This peculiar structure can be also implemented by changing one metal size, and this gives rise to the family of pressure blue analogs. So basically in this cube, which are the characteristics? It's a cubic cell. This is normally the, the size of the cube, the angstrom. You have a linear chains and high degeneracy of these linear chains. 
both metals, for instance, this is the cobalt as a son of rays. Then we might have the manganese, the copper as a son of rays, and so on. Both metals are octahedrally coordinated, one with a six carbon, the other with six nitrogen. And especially, which is very important, this kind of facility like structure, we have some alkali metals that occupy some interstitial AC position, the position that we have inside here. So just um, think about uh, uh, if this alkali metal is lifting or solving of any other metals, for instance, potassium, there's a potential development for to be used of this material as in the batteries. But actually, the interest that were only limited to batteries, and here indicates a very specific uh, things of these batteries like this. It is the huge, the huge cyclability of this battery. The species capacity is not that much large because it's 30, 40 million parabola per gram, but here we have like 50,000 cycles. It is an enormous number. So there are also some other interesting applications in the electrochromism, thermochromism, ion exchange, electrocatalysis here, and also for the use magnetizations and so on. Anyway, we focus on batteries. Now I want to bring the attention to some examples. So what those techniques and especially in operando mode can bring to the study in material science aspect, the study of material that we have inside the battery. First, we can really answer to the question, where does the charge go? So we have an identification of the metal electroactivity. For instance, in this case, we have a copper as a sum of the rays. So we were investigating the iron and the copper. And you may see that we have, uh, because of this strong selectivity for the atomic species, this X-ray techniques has, is just a very possible to investigate both with no interaction between one with the other. So, and uh, we may see in the charge and discharge that these images, if you draw a line here, these are kind of mirror images. This guarantee that you have a first, a complete reversibility. And the second, we can see that uh, both metals are electroactive. So this is consistent with the iron-3, iron-2 redox reaction, and also copper to copper-1 redox reaction. So we start to disclose the electrochemical process. And uh, by slightly modification of the system, we can also have another material that is very similar, that is called copper nitroprusate. In this case, we have a modification of the copper, the sun of the rays, with uh, some NO ligand. And uh, here we show that uh, the interplay between the two, so such techniques on the other side, and uh, so we can use some, uh, we can see the difference in the um, electronic at the, man, at the, at the, uh, at the deco uh, copper side. So copper is electrolytic again, but also we can see the extended structure, how the extended structure work. By looking at the operando modification of operando X or D, we can see some modification in the peaks. Here are some selection of them. Then, if this is the, the cell, we have during discharge a shrinking of this uh, uh, axis, the A, B, B axis, and elongation of the C axis. And the opposite holds true during charge. And the opposite holds true during charge. So, the same material can be also possible to be studied by a um, local structure probe. I mean, about the excess. The excess is detailing the extended excess absorption fine structure. So far, we've just seen some uh, xenis portion. This means the starting part. Then it also interest in the excess portion. And the study of the excess component is particularly interesting because it's both challenging, because it's kind of complicated also in the data analysis. Although it's informative here, because first, the double probe, double probe means that we have uh, we can prove both iron and the copper simultaneously. And also, since we have this, what we may call the strong multiple scattering signal and effects in the excess component, all in this case, all in this class of compile, it might be possible to infer about the number of the chains that is formed or disrupted during the lithium insertion. For instance, we start from number five here, we ended up to have a number of almost three 
at the end of lithium surgery. But another point is very interesting. With the excess, we also can probe the effect on the structural disorder. And the point interesting here is the divalvular the extra divalvular like factor, this factor that is fitted by this uh, um, technique. And uh, the, the results of the analysis indicate that, for instance, the excess divalvular like factor of the uh, copper site is very, very uh, increasing during the lithiation. So we have a, um, um, a strong uh, disorder used by the lithium in this uh, structure. And I want to conclude with this manganese analog of why, because these samples nowadays are one of the main possible analog study samples because they follow the following electrochemical behavior. It is characterized by single plateau that have high potential versus metal. And this is also very interesting because it affects it. It can use this as a lithium, also as a sodium. And also we can consider that both manganese and iron as abundant were, so this has another motivation. Anyway, so we were at the application of the lot of structural probe. <coughs> the exhaust techniques allowed to first evaluate the metal electroactivity, as was the case before, so both sides are electroactive. It to identify the strong antenna effect of the manganese site during the first charge. In fact, here, this is the figure, it is Mangan 06 figure that we have at the beginning. Then we have uh, a, the, the equatorial distance is the retained at about 2.80 angstrom, but we have a strong shrinking of the four equatorial bond lengths. And how much does elongate or contract is about 10% because 1.96 at 0.80. So, Overall, this indicates an extension contraction of this manganese site in the exergic axis about 10%. Now the question was whether the extended structure follows the same percentage or not, the same behavior in terms of elongation contraction. This, of course, can be done by applying this synchrotron radiation X-ray powder diffraction exactly at the same material. Therefore, a parallel parallel of the experiment was done. And anyway, the, we conclude that first, we have a precise lattice parameters evolution contraction. And the second, the cell volume changed only about 2%. So on one hand, we have 2% by an extended structure. On the other side, we have 10% of the local structure. So we concluded this study that we had a non-cooperative antelar fat is taking place and the strong local structure distortion that we have locally are mitigated by periodic at the stand of the structure. So we just concluded with the last one, this the other peculiarity that we were mentioning. The operand experiment allow kinematic approach of the data analysis. So it means that this experimental matrix in terms of absorption, a given energy, can be disclosed as a product of concentration profile multiplied by pure spectra. So this permits the identification number of species or phases during the electrochemical process. For instance, in this plot, the charge and discharge species are progressively transforming on each other phase. That was my last conclusion. I want just uh, to acknowledge uh, all my group, all the collaboration, especially Synchrotron Electra in Italy, and the collaboration we have at KAT and Unicam. And thanks all of you for the attention.